Let me get. Well, it just happens to be uh, Saturday afternoon, September 7th. I hope that brings us luck, the number 7. September 7th, uh, 2013. All right. And uh, welcome to Progressive Discussions. Yes, another week has blown by, and we are here. Yeah. And the creek didn't rise. Yeah, and it's it's a beautiful or the creek. It's a beautiful bone dry, very clear, like like American Southwest desert style. Very clear, not many clouds up there. Um, Saturday afternoon. Beautiful, perfect weekend weather we've been having these past few days, you know? Yeah, perfect weather. I hear somebody sniffling. Yeah, I think the ragweed season is here. So you're going to be hearing me blowing, sniffing, and sneezing. Because I forgot to take the homeopathic. And I ran out of vitamin C, too. Oh, let me just get the formalities out of the way. Oh, man. Formalities. Formalis? Formalis. Formala hobbies. Yeah. Oh man. I will formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor with my authentic bosun's whistle. Pipe him aboard our progressive liberal starship. Like I do every week. Welcome aboard, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, this weekend? I think all the dogs in the neighborhood heard that. Oh, they do hear it. They yeah. do, because when I first got it, I was at the local park and I blew it. Oh, and his big dog, with a le dragging the leash behind him, because he got away from his owner. Hey. He, he came to say hi from a long distance. And, and now today the weather's so great we're doing all natural so you could see the daylight behind us and uh oh excuse me excuse me people i know some of you folks especially those that know me personally personally are going to make fun of me you know carrying on like this with the with the hay fever. Hey fever. Hey you. Hey fever. Is that why they call it hay fever? I don't know. Do you get a fever with it? No. Well then why the hell is it called hay fever? There's no fever involved and there's no hay involved. Well it's like a it's a, right weed. It's like a egg cream, like a chocolate or vanilla egg cream. Uh, there's no eggs in no it? No eggs, no cream. Well there might be. Wait a minute. Now wait a minute. That what, uh, when I was young, it's club soda or seltzer, right? It's chocolate or, va or vanilla syrup and um, milk, but maybe they use cream. When I was young, I used to have I don't know if I called it an egg cream or something uh, of that nature. When I was young, a vanilla soda. A vanilla soda is called cream soda cream today. Cream soda, yes, yes exactly. And That's it's, it's very soda. tasty depending on what brand you get. I'm not a soda drinker, but if no, you get no, a good no. brand like Boylan's or Dr. Brown's or any of those quality companies. But when I was young, I used to like it. Yeah. Did you drink Sarsas Barilli? Nay, 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 nay. Are you a root beer or I birch? Wasn't a root beer, yes. Birch beer? Birch beer, yes. You ever have creamy red birch beer? Birch beer red, yes. Yes. Very good. Being from Pennsylvania, and I think it was some kind of a thing there, you know? Yeah. We had birch beer. Pennsylvania, uh, especially, yeah, I, I guess a, a great portion of the state has a large uh, quantity of uh, German immigrants. Yeah. And they brought their Butch. culture with them. Butch which includes the, the pretzel making and the sausages and all the 
the you lovely see, food that you they see make. right now everything is about these pretzel buns and uh, today yeah i don't know how the hot that. dogs and a pretzel bun i think that's burger burgers and a pretzel bun that's fast food like burger king yeah, yeah. i don't but know how pretzel bun what the hell is this it looks like a uh what's that uh, bread uh, bagel is it, it hala hala it's shiny yeah well, and it's bumpy. pretzel dough, bumpy. pretzels, I know this is an extremely light subject, but pretzels, bagels, and challah bread are, are all shiny. The crust is sh glossy when you bake it. I think challahs, they brush it, maybe they brush it with egg white. Egg, 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 I think the needle got stu stuck egg in wash. the turntable with him. <laughs> I, uh... Like I know bagel, bagels, bagel dough is this is pretty much the same as pizza dough. It's high gluten flour, high gluten unbleached flour. And the only difference is they boil the dough before they make mm. the bagels. I think that's what gives them that gloss. Anyway, back to business. Mm. Let me start off with a little Chisler's Hall of Shame. And I want to begin by showing you... Uh -huh. I know I did this before, but you know, they call it the hungry man dinner. Remember that stupid commercial? How do you handle a hungry oh, man? Man handle him. What is that? The Salisbury steak or no? Yeah, Salisbury steak. Oh God! Smashed potatoes, green beans, green beans. and a little baby a uh, 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 a fudge brownie. Let me tell you something. You see this photo? You see how big it is? And in the back, they got other things like the uh, turkey breast and the fried chicken and all that. Let me tell you something. The actual amount you get is like 50% smaller than what you see on the box. Oh, God. It won't hit gravy. It, it, it's <clears throat> not for a hungry man. Maybe a hungry toddler. I'm a hungry win. Yeah, no, a hungry toddler, they should ah. call it. And it's it, it just typical of, of American advertising, you know. To lie to you, it's a form of lying. What's the uh, what's the ounces say there? Uh, sixteen ounces, and uh, yes, you get more gravy than Salisbury yeah, steak. Yeah, and the tray. In the tray, yeah, and the tray uh, is a couple ounces. You know, it says here questions or comments. <laughs> Call this eight hundred number. <laughs> Are they serious? Yeah. Are they expecting a positive feedback? person has to be total like us a, like us a total idiot to call them and say I just want to thank you for making these wonderful hungry man dinners they really fill me up <laughs> shame on you American food industry particularly frozen dinners what brand is that like Stouffer's and uh, and Lean Cuisine, Swanson. Lean Cuisine, Swanson. Swanson. I don't know if this is Swanson anymore. I'm looking for the name of the company. Yeah, it should be on the front. They're doing a great job of hiding it. Yeah. Oh, gee, look how small the font is for the ingredients and the name of the company. Wow. Uh, I can't fuck. Hold on. You can, you can, oh my God! He needs the magnifying glass. I need the magnifying glass because the, the font, the the essential information. There you go. The essential. The essential information on here is 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 microscopic. Oh, Pinnacle Foods Group, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Capital LLC, whatever. Pinnacle Group, uh, Pinnacle Foods. Well, you know what? Your portions are not Pinnacle. Shame on you, Pinnacle Foods Group, for deceiving your customers. All right. Let's the brand name. Right, let me just keep this here and file this where you got by. Where it, under G, exactly. File this under G where it rightfully belongs. Okay, now, second inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, and I would like to thank one of our agents, uh, a personal trainer, a former competitive bodybuilder, and a uh, um, advisor for Holistic Health Talk, a, a Facebook group, Mr. Mario Petrus, for making a video based on this next Hall of Shame inductee, and say hi and salute with my lucky Blackthorn 
Irish shillelagh, Mario Petrus. Infomercial product, the inflatable expandable hose. Oh man, I thought you were going to go in, 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 in inflatable expand, expandable woman or something. Love yeah, doll. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be funny <laughs> if they if they had an infomercial for something like that? Oh, Adam and Eve has like a late night sex toy uh, 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 Get out. program, but it's like very late wow. with dildos and everything. Of course, the girls dem showing the dildos are very pretty and young. They don't demonstrate them. They just like they run their fingers up and down them. Mm -hmm. You know, like the uh, the model on on, on the prices, right? You know, she runs her fingertips up and down the car. <laughs> but anyway, if you watch the video, and it's on the internet, he the, the hose does not expand, and, and it leaks terribly. It's a piece of crap, and, he, and Mario gets very upset on the video. So, number two, second inductee into our Chisler's Hall of Shame. We have a personal experience with that, the lady next door. There are there are many personal experiences, and again, we want to thank the Republicans for, and I'm being sarcastic for deregulating companies, so they can sell you garbage and they can lie to you in the commercials. Mm. Okay, uh, now I want to talk about. It's very annoying. The music industry's copyright laws, how it and how it applies to YouTube. Now, during the Labor Day uh, Italian Festival here in our town, Lodi, New Jersey, St. Uh, Joseph, St. Joseph's Giuseppe. Roman Catholic Church uh, has an annual Italian festival uh, for Labor Day weekend. So I, I did a video of uh, our own, the Renaissance Man Can Create performing. Guess what? When I finally, to make a long story short, when I uploaded the video onto YouTube, YouTube muted the audio on the entire video because the DJ at the festival was playing his soundtracks. Now, am I affiliated with that DJ? No. Am I affiliated or is Ken Create affiliated with the management of the festival? No. I simply was filming Ken Create perform. I did not decide on playing the, the soundtracks, playing the music. The DJ did. So why are you coming down on me and my video and muting it? I mean, I mean, I have nothing to do with the sounds that are occurring during my videotaping. So it's very unfair to me, and there is no way for me to rebuttal it. It's like a cut and dry. Deal. Well, you know what it is. They. Um uh, they should have some way of making it clear right. that you put up the video there and it has nothing to do with selling it and this, that, yeah, and other thing. They said, I, yeah, they said it doesn't matter. I they, know, but it should matter. Because I, I am not selling the video. Because uh, YouTube started out <laughs> with the idea oh, that people would be putting things up there. Okay? Right. Uh, and if you're not selling something, if I buy a video, okay, and I play it for somebody, yes, I'm not selling it. No, you know, you're so not. So I should not have any copyright problems. If I want to use it to sell it or to do something with it to yeah. make money, yeah, then I have to have permission or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Right, and also, does this mean that if a couple gets married and they hire a DJ for their wedding reception, and being that it's a very important event in a, in a human being's life, especially to a girl, they hire the wedding DJ, they usually they hire somebody to videotape mm -hmm. and edit the wedding reception, and in the background, or usually the highlight of the wedding reception, is the, the entertainment and the dancing. And the bunny hop. And all those stupid uh, alley cat, all those stupid, well usually when, there's, when they're trying to cater to 
all age groups and the older folks. They play these retarded wedding dances and songs. Personally, I would have just a club DJ. And, oh yeah, and, you'd have metal there. And if the old timers don't like to dance to it, let them sit down. But yeah, so anyway, the girl, the woman takes her beloved wedding reception video and she wants to put it on her YouTube channel. Well, guess what? They'll mute her. They'll mute her entire wedding reception. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's fair at all. It ain't fair and it ain't what YouTube started out to be. No, and it has to do with greed in America. The, the, the record companies with their sleazebag lawyers, it has to do with old-fashioned American capitalist and you know greed. What? And you know what's at the bottom of it all? What's it's that? It's denying you an education. Yeah. Because it is limiting your access to something that could enhance your education. Right. Hey, okay. I mean, it's not about the music per se. It's not about trying to sell your precious songs. It's about the event. Yeah. But they penalize you. So anyway. Yeah. And not, have you noticed, of course, that uh, like Google and Facebook and all of this crap all this shit, they're tracking you, they're learning all about you, and yeah. wherever you go, wherever you go, any website you go to, it is any of it, they put up the ads that are of interest to you. Everywhere I go now, I got Vitamin Shop, I got Carolot, I got the things that I buy from. Right. Okay? Right. Because they know this. Well, I got news for them. When I want to buy something, I go to the website where I purchase it. Uh huh. And when I'm at another website doing something, right. whatever it may be, maybe I'm looking at a porn video, I don't know. Whatever. But I'm not interested in those stinking ads. No, they're, at that time. they're obnoxious. They shove it down your throat. Just like if you change the channels, or even if you don't change the channels. As soon as the program switches to commercial, the volume skyrockets. It goes. It goes very loud. It's, it's like your attention. It's like sales. Sales in the in a deregulated America is very pushy. Is very loud. Is very obnoxious and in your face. Well, it's always been like that. It's the foot in the door. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. grandparents used to tell me, "Oh, you hate the commercials now. What if you were with us?" back in the the 50s or early 60s or 1940s when you had stupid jingles and you had to listen to these stupid jingles you know with these hired uh, song uh, groups snap grappling pop yeah everything was a stupid song was a stupid jingle that's that's obnoxious too but i i, I was never i never experienced that cuz i'm not that old <laughs> no i'm not so but i was thinking dr bill these dj's that play soundtracks for these different songs, they're actually advertising the music for people that might wish to buy it. Exactly. But they don't look at it that way. No, they don't. They look at it very short term. Everything is a sale. Or or, or preventing a sale. It's like we want our we want our cut. You have to get permission to play the song. We're not making any money. They don't look at it that every time somebody puts a video with a DJ playing soundtracks on YouTube, this DJ is advertising their songs. Exactly. Well, that's what radio is all about, ain't it? That right. They there play you go. a song, and you say, "Hey, I like that song. Going to go yeah. out and buy it." What is a radio station that has that has a music format? It's an, a way of advertising the music. And hopefully people will like it and go buy the CD. I mean, don't they? Don't they realize that it's an advertisement of the music? Yeah. But then they said they mute your videos. But they think people are stealing it and preventing them from making big books. Sounds like they already made the big books. Sounds like a Republican mentality. Why don't they think of it this way? That they are making the big bucks and the author and the artist is not. Well, they don't care about that. I don't think the record companies really, really give a shit about the no, they performers. Don't. No, they That's don't. why they signed them up to lousy contracts. Like if you're young and you go on American Idol or whatever with that Simon Cowell guy, 
and, 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 and you're all starry-eyed because you know you're breaking into the business guaranteed the contract they make that kid sign is crap exactly. it's not in his favor it's gonna use you okay exactly well that's it you know I have a personal experience there yeah Oh, yeah. Because back in the 70s, of course, I had several books published. Yes, you did. And at that time, uh, that was before 1978, when artists were giving uh, more leeway as far as copyrights and stuff were concerned. And at that time, you had to sell your book outright to mm -hmm. the publisher. Yeah. So I have a book right now uh -huh. on Amazon.com. That's right. From 1972, that's how many years? I, and I... 41 I, years? Yes. 41 years, what the is book it is called? still... What is it? You can't mention it? No, can mention it. What, because you sold the... You sold no, the, the rights? No, because I don't want to mention it. Oh, okay, let's leave it at that. Yeah, but it's being sold today, and I get no royalties whatsoever. Oh, that's like when, that's like when they interviewed uh, the actor that played uh, Greg uh, Brady on the Brady Bunch. He says uh, no residuals. The, the right. actor, the actors back there, they only got royalties, like for what the hell was it? A short period of time. Yeah. He, he said either five months or five years. I forget, but it it was a limited period of time that those actors back then, whether mm -hmm. they be child or adult receive royalties and of course the laws change now for the better but uh a little bit they did not make uh, any uh, um uh, uh with Danny Bonaducci like said that he made like uh $400 a week doing the Partridge family I mean wow. they didn't get paid that much back then mm. Sounds like the like these sleazy independent circuit pro wrestling promoters stiffing everybody. It's all the same. Stiff, stiff, stiff. It's all the same. As soon as the state athletic commission stopped getting involved in pro wrestling, deregulation, and, and there's no union. Ah, uh, people like to bash unions. As soon as you lift regulation and or unions, you have nothing but crookedness, underhandedness chaos, sleaze. And the Republicans and their Democrat enablers love it. Yeah, the, the they love it. we're talking about the sellout blue dog Democrats who sell their voters out completely for the, the big mamu. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to something, a, a little statement, health related. 80% of the world supply of painkillers are consumed in the United States. Oh, yes. <coughs> yeah, eighty percent. That's a lot. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, all right. Um, and that's not to mention the addiction. Wouldn't you think that a lot of people kills. in the, in other portions of the world got a lot of pain? Well, they have to suffer it, I guess. Well, I don't think I don't think Europeans and Canadians are feeling the same pain that Americans are feeling with this lousy system we have. Mm. But, um, and then, okay, next, there are currently 3.9 million job openings uh, and 11.4 million unemployed in America. Actually, that figure is probably more like 14 or 25 percent of people oh, unemployed. I, oh, yeah, I wouldn't doubt Figures it. are skewed. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Yeah. So when a Republican says, oh, you're making minimum wage, get another job. Yeah. Get a job. Oh, you're not, you're, you're not working, you're unemployed, get a job. You know what? The jobs are not out there. Well, not only that, that's 16 hours a day. What does that leave you? Uh, eight hours of sleep. That's it. Right. And if a couple both have a full-time minimum wage job, they still can't make ends meet. No, they cannot. It's not going to work. Wages have not kept up with profits. What's that? Wages have not kept up with profits. No, they haven't. Not at all. Okay. Like they used to. <coughs> the wages and profits used to run in tandem. Like in they, tandem. Like they after World War II. Like they should. Yes. Of course, it's fair. Oh, no. But that what they do today is they pay their uh, CEOs more out of their profits. And then they invest in companies they have no business investing in. CEOs make obscene 
money compared to the, the blood, sweat, and tears of the employees. And they always blame it on the shareholder. Everything is, oh, I, I have no choice. I am obligated to make the shareholder happy. That's mm -hmm. a lie. That's just an excuse. Um, and same thing with baseball. Baseball hey, made uh, me very happy. And Alex Rodriguez gets paid an insane amount of money. So what do these pe what do these owners do? They turn around and jack up the price of the uh, tickets, and you have to pay for for a family of uh, of four. You know, you have to pay a few hundred dollars just to see one baseball game, Ooh. and eight dollars for whatever a hot dog, a soda, the, you know, sold the snacks, the beer. God knows what that costs. So uh, that yeah, that's what's going on. And All right, cut with corn sir. Back. Oh yeah, American food industry. Nice job. Dilute everything with high fructose corn syrup, like honey, where they do not put on the label, on the ingredients, high fructose corn syrup. So you think you're buying pure honey, and if you're in a uh, in a Whole Foods and you buy organic honey, guess what? They even dilute that, and they don't tell you they dilute it. So that, there's another inductee into our Chisler's Hall of Shame. And how many people have corn allergies? Uh, yeah, but we know the whole purpose of buying authentic raw honey, especially if it's organic, is to is to benefit from the medicinal and nutritional value of the honey. To buy honey, period. To buy honey. Yeah. You know, that I mean, that, that's the whole idea. If you wanted cheap corn syrup, you would buy corn syrup. You would buy something else. Yeah. If you want to buy pure maple syrup, you don't want to bring home 50% maple syrup and 50% corn syrup and sugar, you know, or ma artificial maple flavored corn syrup. Mrs. Butterworth. Mrs. Butterworth. I wonder how much real butter you ever see. There's how, nothing in there. You ever see the fat ass on the on the Butterworth bottle? Yeah. <laughs> oh, remember that reading we did when I, I told you that the Pantene shampoo commercial is now shaped like a, a phallic? Yeah, yeah, Like yeah, a dildo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure the upper management had a had an excuse for enhancing sales, you know, so... Well, they, they're changing the... A lot of stuff is changing the bottle, like Miller changing uh -huh. the bottle, but not the ingredients. You know, they changed the the appearance of Uncle yeah. Ben's on the Uncle Ben's rice box and yeah, Aunt, this makes a big and Aunt Jemima. They made them uh, less stereotypical and more like modern to you know get people off their backs. Okay, here we go next. Walmart, oh the beloved Walmart. Yay! Walmart grosses four hundred billion dollars per year, while its low-paid employees have to go on welfare. <laughs> We've talked about that in the past <laughs> several times. Um, interesting. Next, well, next and last. Retired U.S. presidents, and this has to do with the salaries. Retired U.S. presidents make $450,000 a year for life. <laughs> Congress and Senate. The Congress and Senate on average receive $174,000 for life. The Speaker of the House receives $223,500 for life. The majority and minority leaders receive $194,400 a year for life, but the average soldier deployed in Afghanistan receives only, um, on average, $38,000 per year. And the average Social Security retired senior citizen recipient receives a mere $12,000 a year. So this shows us where we need to make the cuts. It also shows us where you will see no cuts in pensions. And, you know... What, ha what, ha what happens here is that they, of course, this is short-term thinking again. Right. These people do not think. And you want to destroy the government? You want to make it smaller? Just yeah. Hey, what about your pensions? 
There you go. If you destroy the government, hey, your pensions are bye-bye. They cut off their nose to spite their face. Yeah, my gran my grandfather used to say that. He was right. <coughs> um, absolutely right. Um, I saw a banner where it listed the location of all the Rothschild uh, private banks. And they were all in um, terrorist countries, and and the, and the la but now they're only in like uh, Cuba, uh, um, Iran, and I think Afghanistan. Well, as the savings and loan debacle showed us back in the eighties, uh -huh. banks are to get ba banks are the business you want to get into if you want to be a crook. Yeah, or, okay. or, or or a Goldman Sachs all around the world, or a Goldman Sachs sleaze bag. Yeah, well, Goldman Sachs and sleaze bag, you know, it's the same term. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you'll never see the inside of a jail cell if you're with affiliated with any of them. <laughs> you know, what if you well, pro the government? That's why. But if you protest against them, you'll see the the the, the jail cell. Oh yeah, interior. you're a terrorist, baby. You're a domestic terrorist. <laughs> Okay? According to the National Auto uh, Defense Authorization. Yeah. Well, the, fa the fascism is here in America in the 21st Remember century. Remember people what fascism is. Fascism is clearly, simply, the marriage of corporations right. with the government. Now you got all the, I just put it in my new newsletter, in my article. Yes, it's coming you, out. You, all of these Republicans and conservative Christians, they're all bitch bitching about gay marriage. But you don't hear a peep, you don't hear a word about the marriage between government and corporations, do you? You don't hear about the thing that's really going on, but you hear about, thing, about gay people getting married, you hear about Miley Cyrus sticking her tongue out and, 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 and grinding her ass up against... Twerking, baby, twerking! twerking. And she claims to be the best twerker in, a, in the universe or world, you know, and, and she seems to have a, a, spa, a spasm in her tongue. It's always going out and sideways. What the hell that was about, I don't know. I don't know. She's, uh, but her, and her ass is really not well toned at all. But people are concerned about the fr frivolous things in life, but not about the fact that, besides what Dr. Bill said, uh, scientists have, um, have admitted that the uh, negative consequences of a global warming is much worse than they originally thought. The temperature of the oceans, and that will that will bring destruction. Very, that very severe storms throughout the world. Uh, it's like, but no, no, no. People are concerned with frivolous things. Yeah, we can't clean up coal. We can't put scrubbers on those chimneys, man. We got to burn dirty coal. Okay? And also, Fukushima. Is, is now. We have found that is 18 times the amount of radiation they said was leaking before. The Japanese government ha has kept the accurate numbers a secret until now. There, there are 30, no, there are 300 tons of radioactive contaminated water. I think it's 300,000 gallons or something going into it, the ocean it's a, every it's day. A, it's, it's an enormous amount getting dumped into the ocean right now and they're asking for help to try to stop it or slow it down. Yeah, because it's polluting the fish and the fish are coming over here. And what do you have? And in we're the, eating the fish. And what do you have in the world's oceans and seas? You have currents. You have currents up in the air. Well, you have currents in, in, in the ocean. And currents are world travelers. Well, the uh, some of the debris from uh, uh, Japan, from the, uh, the tsunami, from and the cetera, from the came tsunami. over the California coast. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, some man. some parts of of uh, that of. Um, um, I don't know, marina? It, it was a yeah. seaside town. Yeah. And there was a marina there. And there some parts of that town ended up on the California coast. Mm -hmm. so, so you know damn well the, the radioactive contamination is going to 
head for other countries mm -hmm. like ours. And the tuna. The yeah, tuna. the contamination of our seafood. You know, it's really uh, we are living in the end times, without a doubt. You know, and 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 the Republicans don't care. It's it's profit before people and the planet. With Short the term thinking? Short term, never long term. Well, let us finally sink our teeth into these uh, readings. Um, I was going to not do my monologue and just sink our teeth into the readings from the beginning of the show, but what? there's always some very upsetting news that I learned that has to be shared with our viewers. And Oops. hold on, sir. You dropped something. Yeah, my first article. Oh. The fan bloated away. All right. You got it? I got it now. Au naturel. Uh, excuse me. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. God. The Food and Drug Administration says consumers should not worry too much about levels of arsenic in rice. Oh, sure. They, they say not to worry about anything. But should vary their diets just in case. Vary your diet with what? Supermarket? Quinoa, you know. Oh, okay. Well, they, oh, no. FDA never tells people about quinoa and amaranth and Did healthy. you know that there's such a thing as black quinoa, too? There's red the quinoa. Red and the other one? And I did some research. The black quinoa, which I can't find, is the most nutritious quinoa. Mm -hmm. the, the grain of the Incas. In Actually, a quinoa is not a grain. It is a seed. Pseudo. It is a seed. Like amaranth is not a grain either. It is a, a seed. It, they call it pseudo grains. Uh. Just like uh, Republicans should be called uh, pseudo uh, 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 public servants or pseudo politicians. Crooks in disguise of a politician. Yeah, and, and if they are conservative Christian, uh, they are con they are angels of light. Yeah, pseudo Christian. Well, I just flat out call them demons. Well, that's what they are. I don't want to call them. I think conservative Christian is too mild. Yeah. Uh, you know? Unfortunately, I have to when I use the word Christian in that uh, in that way, I have to put yeah. quotes around. Like like for instance, Bernie Sanders. God love him. He he's too easy when he do, when he does a public speech and talks about the republicans he is not harsh enough in the way you know well, you know because you know why we we have this thing about oh well we have two parties uh, you know the one has ideas the other one has ideas that's not what it's about one party and uh, many people in the other party are just plain evil they should be called but look forget about bipartisanship and 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 uh, why can't we all get along and uh, and uh, compromise? It's not going to work with Republicans. They don't want to compromise. So why be nice to them? Why call them, like I think Bernie Sanders called them, the, uh, our Republican uh, uh, friends. Friends or, yeah, or, or something. Yeah, right. No, no, they're demons. Yeah. Call them what they are because they're not going to compromise with you anyway. The agency released a study on Friday of arsenic in 1,300 samples of rice and rice products. The largest study to date looking at the carcinogens presence in that grain. Consumer groups have pressured the FDA to set a standard for the amount of arsenic that can be present in rice products. By the way, if our memories serve us correctly. We go back to the days of George W. Bush, who went in office, had the arsenic levels in things raised, allowed more. Well, that's what Republicans do. They Correct. De they deregulate businesses. So now, well, the fat cats. If you're a mom and pop store, they, they'll 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 the crucify yeah, you. Yeah. But now, when the, when they say uh, we hear about the, the amounts that are in it today, right? Remember, are larger. 
than they used to be. And now we assume that these levels uh -huh. are okay. We no, assume. they're not. No, they're not. The study shows varying levels with the most arsenic in brown rice. Isn't it funny how when things, when things like these happen, man, they always happen more to what you would assume are good foods, natural foods. They come out the worst. Brown rice. Well, I cannot, um, I cannot eat the American grown brown rice because it tastes like shit. I, 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 I like foreign brown rice, like uh, right now I'm eating a particular um, jasmine brown rice from Thailand that is absolutely delicious. Mm. And I also like brown basmati rice from Pakistan or India. Uh, aged brown basmati rice is good, but this particular one I have now is the best I've ever had. But uh, it, is just, it tastes like cardboard to eat yeah. American brown rice, except for the Lundberg family. I highly recommend them. They grow certified organic brown rice in California. The least amount was found in instant rice. Lazy ass people. They, it's so easy to cook old fashioned brown rice. It's so friggin easy. A cup of dry brown rice, you rinse it in a, in, in a mesh colander well, very well, a cup of, 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 of brown rice, two and a half cups of water, you let it simmer slowly until the water evaporates. If, if you are if you're, are not a health nut and you want to make white rice, it's two cups of water to one cup of rice. It's so easy, but no, they got to have instant rice, parboiled rice. I used to do that with the rice in the oatmeal that when you get it to that point where you were saying there, you put the lid on it. And you let it sit for a while and it's done. Low flame. You know? You can never go wrong with a lower flame. You don't have you won't burn the bottom of the pot, you won't have to scrub the pot. I personally use the pressure cooker for my brown rice and it only takes like ten to fifteen minutes. Infant cereal and infant rice formulas are also at the low end of the spectrum. The FDA says the amounts are so small that rice is safe to eat and that there isn't any concern of immediate or short-term health effects. They always say that. Oh, of course the, they do. The amounts of the toxins are so low, you would have to eat uh, uh, um, a, a, an astronomical amount to, to uh, get sick. But remember what I said. The amounts that were are higher now. But they don't have the same attitude towards supplements. Oh, God forbid you saw what happened with tryptophan. And, and, and look at contamination by a Japanese company. And what about folic acid? And it's off the market. What is? Tryptophan. tryptophan. With supplements, they want they want to keep your supplement potencies very low. Oh, that, but they have no problem with, with arsenic in the, in the brown rice. Exactly. Exactly. Because they don't want you to stay healthy. They want they want to they want to no, feed man. that that pharmaceutical industry Ooh. with sick people. Yeah, which has markups that are are astronomical. Astronomical markups, worse than the fine jewelry industry. Whoa. Ah. Getting a little closer to home. Okay. When State Senator Barbara Bono. Okay, who we're speaking whom, of New Jersey now. Whom I will vote for and I am endorsing and it's not balloon boy Chris Christie. Bono said to Governor Christie frolicking on the beach. Frolicking in that commercial. Like a beached whale. In uh, that commercial. Oh, oh the stronger, stronger than the storm. We're stronger than the storm. Oh, we're stronger than Oh, you'll be stronger if you use Chris Christie as a seawall. Anyway, him frolicking at the beach doesn't entice her to visit the shore. She wasn't criticizing his weight. Her campaign said. No, too. no, I don't. I, I, 
he has he has too many flaws to criticize more. To, 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 yeah, to just be uh, fixated on his weight. Christie took issue with his opponent's remark, posted on YouTube. When asked about it during an event at the New Jersey Institute of Technology on Tuesday morning, I'm very disappointed that she has decided to go down that road for me and for other folks across New Jersey, many folks who are challenged by their weight, Christie said. I thought he had the lap, you know, a lap band surgery. So, so, so Chris Christie is what you would say horizontally challenged? Excuse me. These are my, my beloved levity belts. The fact Horizontally challenged. Ha ha. That someone running for governor would make the derisive comments about someone's physical appearance, I think, is really beneath the office <coughs> that she is seeking. And I'm disappointed. His job performance as governor is beneath the office. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Christie accused Buono of following in the footsteps of jo Governor John Corzine who during his 2009 campaign ran a television ad showing Christie getting out of a vehicle in slow motion yeah. as a narrator opines that the former U.S. attorney threw his weight around. Well, not to mention all the lovely jokes David Letterman used to use that were funny as hell. Well, John Corzine was a Democrat, but he was a corporatist. He was a former Goldman Sachs man, and he was a he is a billionaire. So, I don't think Corzine felt anybody's pain as a Democrat. And we should not be pitying a billionaire. I mean, as we do I mean, the Kennedys were rich, but Teddy Kennedy, the Kennedys did, uh, worked really hard for the little guy. Yeah, Ed, Edward Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, Ed Kennedy, God rest his soul, did a, work really hard for the little guy. Uh, anyway, he threw his weight around to avoid getting traffic tickets. Why? He's he's not a a responsible driver? No, he's not. Christy? No, he's not. You mean he has a heavy And he I has mentioned a, that a heavy foot pedal of And I mentioned that the way back in the campaign. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <coughs> But Bono's comments were not part of any ad campaign, and her staff didn't post the video online. Adam Bierman, a producer and show host for Princeton Community Television, a public government access cable channel, posted the brief clip last week. The Middlesex County lawmaker who runs every morning is shown standing in front of a sign that reads, New Jersey Federation of Democratic Women and accusing Christie of wasting money on a special U.S. Senate election to fill the late Frank Lautenberg's seat. Speaking of that election, this is my aside, mm -hmm. I still point up that the, the elect special election was not needed mm -hmm. and the money that was spent on it could have reinstated in the state of New Jersey for the elderly and the disabled the uh, uh, homestead rebates. Yes. Which were not done. The which were not done. Well, everything that was cut by Christie for people living on fixed incomes could have been reinstated if he didn't give away so much damn money to his rich friends. Yeah. Including the food pantries that he closed down for the homeless. Bono also takes issue with the states bypassing the law the low, excuse me, the low bidder to spend an additional, an additional two million dollars mm -hmm 
on the stronger than the storm ad campaign. Oh God. You're not stronger than any storm. Mother Nature always wins, remember that. Which features Christy and his family. Because the, the Christy family doesn't live on the coast. Now I don't know about you, but seeing Chris Christie frolicking on the beach is not going to drive me to go down the shore. No, not not wanting to get ripped off is keeping me from driving down the Jersey Shore. Christie, who underwent weight loss surgery in February, said he didn't let Corzine's comments get to him four years ago, and he won't let Bono's either. I guess he's stronger than the statements. Yeah, yeah, he's, he picks and chooses what he's stronger than. It won't change the way I feel about myself and about lots of people I represent in this state who face a similar challenge yeah. I have of trying to control their weight and be in better shape, he said. You know, instead of him whining like a baby about his weight, he should be thinking about the high unemployment in New Jersey uh, and, and, and about cutting programs to help these poor people and, uh, and, and about the fact that you have a homeless camp, people living in tents in Lakewood, Lakewood and yeah. the list goes on and on, you know, a lot of people are hurting in Jersey and, and, the, and the Hurricane Sandy victims have not received the funds they need from FEMA. Yeah, most of the crap is going to uh, Christie's friends, contractors, You see? You see? He loves Money. giving away. Got, what, what, what would he get? $51 billion? He loves giving From away Congress? Uh, your, your middle class tax burden money to his rich friends. Bono's campaign accused the governor of misrepresenting her remarks. Governor Christie seems to think that everything is about him. Well, that's natural. I mean, look at him. Said David Turner. Selfish, gluttonous. A campaign spokesman. First, he defended his starring role in a federally funded ad campaign as absolutely essential to storm recovery. In other words, the federal government paid for that ad, which Christie used as a political ad campaign. I got news for these people. Hurricane Sandy or Tropical Storm Sandy was just the tip of the iceberg. Global global warming is real and it's worse than they originally thought and that's only the very beginning because New Jersey will get hit with worst storms. Now, as businesses question the effectiveness of the campaign, he says that anyone who dares to question him is somehow attacking his weight. An excuse. Just an excuse to change the subject about what he has done as governor. During a tour of the Jersey Shore in advance of Labor Day weekend, Christie boasted that many business owners and mayors have told him the ad campaign helped this summer. Yeah, okay. All right. They advertised to Jersey Shore. That's why it helped. Bono said during a visit to a storm-damaged home in Neptune, New Jersey, last month, ah. that Christie should not have starred in the commercial. No, Barbara, uh, I mean, uh, Neptune, New Jersey is where my brother's auto body shop is located, Shore Collision. Is he still in business? Yeah, yeah, Route, I think it's Route 35 or 36, main drag, goes through Neptune. No water around? Uh, well, no, my brother got hit by With the wind. My brother got serious damage from her, from Sandy, where he lives, in Brick, New oh, Jersey. Anyway, oh, yeah. it is now time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we're going to take a little break, and we will be back with William H. Morrow III, our voice artist, our, our uh, voiceover artist. All right. Okay, we are back, and I am proud to announce that our official, Mega Life 21 official voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, is, is with us now. In the house. How you doing, sir? How you feeling? 
Oh, I've been better, Jimmy. Not too bad, but you know, okay, I guess. That's good. Where is your location now, William? I'm still in Jersey. I'm going anywhere in two weeks, so. Okay, um, now before you, before you start, because I know you have a particular subject that you have a lot to say about, uh, say something about our newsletter, which is the backbone of our organization here. Well, the best way to join your organization, as you mentioned, is to go to www.newslettercenter.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're living in end times, people, so you need Newsletter Censored. That is correct. William H. Morrill is absolutely right. And um, now, William Morrow, we were discussing something at a meeting, I believe it was Friday, yesterday, and uh, you had a lot to say. Oh, oh, uh, me, you and I were discussing something at a meeting uh, yesterday, Friday. We were discussing Syria, and we were discussing the the uh, striking workers for the fast food. Industry. We were discussing that, and also the subject of um, of double standards, unfair, the unfairness of double standards in our society. Yes, we have that all the time. I was talking about, some, about that with someone else this morning, too. Uh, the double standard about, well, a lot of it's why now. Uh, people complaining about the Washington Redskins, how the Red King Redskins is somehow demeaning to the, the American Indian, which I don't believe it is at all. I think it's respectful of anything. No one has said a word about a brand in every food market, in market, wherever you go. Right. Now, nobody says a word about that. Why the Redskins? Because they're bigger, more, more well-known. Strong the well -known. The baggy. Discriminatory. It's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, it goes back to what we discussed over the month. This, uh, this thin skin that's of us. Every, you open your mouth, you're offending somebody nowadays. How? Oh, it's just wrong. It's got to stop. Yeah. It's yeah. not meant to demean these people. I think when a company chooses a name like that, it's out of pride. They're not doing it like you. Let's start a company with the Indian down. We'll call it Red Man. Yeah. Not thinking that way. Well, well double, double standards uh, uh, contaminate every part of our life. Like, like socially, you know, like uh, a woman, uh, the courts always favor the woman. Uh, or the woman's word against the man's word. You know, the, the, the women want to be equal with uh, equal, equal pay for equal job, equal work. But socially, they expect. Believe, I, I strongly believe in equal pay for the equal work. Yes, yeah. I, but, I believe in that. But they uh, expect the man when, to. Yeah. When a crime is potentially committed, such as a rape or a falsified claim of rape, immediately they believe the woman. And how many times we've we seen on the news and read in the papers a woman recants her story, sometimes after years of this young man being incarcerated in prison, says, I lied. Now, as we discussed yesterday, what have you ever heard of the woman being brought to trial? As I said yesterday, isn't that, number one, perjury? Number two, aren't you filing a, a falsified police report? Number three, the cost of all the man hours and man wage of the police force to investigate. You never hear of them being brought up on charges. A woman for filing a false report, a lie. Right. Well, that man, young man, whoever, ever gets those years that he lost back. All the, the lawsuits of the money he may get, millions of, won't replace the, those, God knows how many years he lost in prison. Exactly. Why do we always believe the woman? Well, plus... I guess because it's the weaker sex, they call it. Like, yeah. So that's well, plus, the only argument there, really. But uh, it shows the power a woman has when she can just say he raped me. Right. It's kind of scary. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what they can do to you when you haven't done a thing. And granted, most times, probably, things do happen that a man commits. It. But when a woman falsifies something, that doesn't make it right. You know, I will admit rape is completely wrong. You never force anybody to do anything. I believe strongly the woman has the right if they want you to walk down the street completely naked. That doesn't give you the right to touch. 
touch her or rape her, you know, anything. Uh, right. Well, at, at a job, I mean, uh, um, if a man asks a, uh, a woman out on a date and she says no and he leaves her alone, which he should do, the woman can turn around and report it and, and the guy could lose his job. The man can get fired. Yeah, report him for what? I'm a real horrible human being, aren't I? Right. Or, you know, I mean, that's not har harassment. is when somebody says no and you continue to ask. Yeah, it's, it's pestering them beyond. You know. You can't compliment a female, you know, you're right away because you're born male. You're you're automatically you look nice. the bad guy. I mean, uh, if I said you're still hideous, then I'd be a bad guy for putting you down. So where's the winning situation here? You know, it's like the, what they want to hear. Yeah, it, who it, they it, want to hear it from, and that's just not right. Yeah. Well, it's it, it sounds That's like not it's no. it sounds like something the lesbian community would would say like oh a, a man is complimenting me I'm going to report him or he asked me out you know like they would get offended but not a, a heterosexual people, woman. A lot of them could just be angry or they could be bitter and they make up stuff. Mm -hmm. Just pure blatant lying. Sure. It's not right. You know, I mean, socially socially in like dating websites you older women who have experienced life are usually very bitter against men and then you're 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 guilty until proven innocent well look look yeah in many ways i guess i'm saying this facetiously when we used to go clubbing way back in our days the players club or what have you yeah what i said to girls that i knew and kidding around and they knew it we laughed and had fun they walk in, they look great, and they kind of go, oh, mama, she does, we boy, no. And they'd laugh, you know, we'd have fun with it. Today, I, I, I could be labeled a, I don't know, a stalker or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean. And all it, I did was just kidding, kidding around with girls I knew. We laughed about it and had fun. It was all, it was nothing. People are so overly cautious and paranoid and thin-skinned. Thin-skinned. Everybody's out to get you. Everyone's out to hurt you. That's just not true. Yeah. You know? Well, getting back to the legalities, that is that is horrible for a man to do jail time for somebody. Not, yeah, when you're innocent, you, you're sitting and thinking, think about that. You're locked in a little room with the size of a closet, and you know it's terrible. Yeah. Now, now moving, moving on to the, um, moving on to the, little water, please. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to the fast food restaurant strikes. Uh, I read something earlier in the show that, uh, and it's kind of related. Uh, Walmart grosses four hundred billion dollars per year on average, but their employees have to apply for welfare. Isn't that wonderful? Four hundred billion. Isn't that grand? Do you figure what they're getting paid per hour? They're living below, below the federal minimum poverty wage. The minimum minimum for poverty is twenty three thousand something. <laughs> and these people are averaging seventeen to eighteen thousand. That shows you how the cost of living is. Yeah. Four hundred billion dollars. And you can afford you cannot afford to pay them a little bit more, even double. Yeah. I'm and all for this walk-up. Me too. M M McDonald's grosses an astronomical sum of money, and the, and, the, and they're complaining about raising the minimum wage. I mean, it's incredible. There's no complaint there for them. I don't believe that. that it's expensive. Not just McDonald's, but any of them. Across the board. The profit margin, as I said last week, the options are the government could say, go ahead and give them the double or whatever, and give them special tax incentives or write-offs, or people where it is, and like somebody said on TV today, on CNN, that the government step in with aid. Yeah. If 
they were making 725 or 8,000 out the government. Wages well, are a tax write off. Wages, uh, Dr. Bills just said that all wages to an employer is a tax write off. Well, I wonder. Cost I think them nothing. More and give them a special incentive if they do double this. And even if they do double this, let's be honest, uh, is that going to be enough to really still live on? It's especially if you have a family and if you're trying to pay a mortgage or rent, even if you do 40 hours and 15. That's $600 a week. See? Yeah. And that's before taxes. Right. Well, 40 hours. And how many companies are working? How many expenses are we giving full time 40 hours now? Everything's part time. Yeah, they know the tricks. They cut you off around 30 some odd hours or even less. Yeah, they don't want to. They work on these fast foods, you're getting 20 plus hours. <clears throat> so they're they're if all. You get the full timer. 40 hours is $600. Yeah, that's 2400 a month, and I pay a mortgage. So 2400 that's a simple month. No, but there are other expenses coming out of it. You got a, your electric gas bill or whatever, the whole bit, the food, everything else, gas. Right. Uh, mass transit to get to work if you don't have a car. You know, there's, uh, wherever you're getting paid, there's hands out there waiting for that money right away. You yeah. Pay your bills. Yeah. That's not the American dream. No. I think of the American Restaurant <laughs> Association or the National Restaurant, whatever it's called, uh, explaining what these are stepping stones. Well, no, they're not. Because all these people nowadays, it's kind of like in the 70s or 80s when there were teenagers getting spending money in a fast food job. Nowadays, what? the average age of a fast food worker is 29 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, what do you mean a stepping stone? No, the National Restaurant Association is still paying people uh. Le uh, much less than minimum wage that receive gratuities, like waiters and waitresses that, that re depend on tips. They are paying well, them think, like... Again, you're exactly right. Even, even uh, restaurant and diner workers don't even get minimum wage. And the, get and the owner like wants to share in their tips. They oh, don't, they don't really? really get minimum. Yes. I don't know why that's allowed. Oh, and you hear, do, do you hear something, do you hear what, what Dr. Bill just said is despicable? And the owner of the restaurant now wants a portion of their tips. Some places do, and that's just not right. No. And he has no right to their tips. Why? Why? What have you done? Did you see these people? Did you serve them? Did you carry a plate over? No, but he's but, but but he's paying them if he's paying them like two dollars an hour because, you know, the government just allows the restaurant association to to well, to give them. It's also at two something an hour. It's it's for all intents and purposes free or slave labor. It's slave labor. I mean, that price come on two so something an hour. So what what right does he? Let's what, be honest. What, here, okay, that's just pure. Yes, it's wrong. I mean, what right does something an hour? Here, I'm not paying you hardly anything. I might as well the just customers sit here. are paying you for what it really comes down to. I've got some friends that own a lot of diners in this area. I won't name names, but I know from the managers I know of most set places. <laughs> they told me, Billy, downstairs in the, in the office in the safe, there is never, ever less than two hundred thousand dollars in cold hard cash. That's money they've skimmed off the top. That's why diners, restaurants, and the whole bit prefer cash payment. They can skim that. They can't skim a credit card or a debit card per se. Uh, so so that's, that is ridiculous and it's wrong. Yeah, so they can skim. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. They want pure cash. Maybe that's that why... That can be traced. You maybe that's... Trace cash. You know? Maybe that's why there's no Denny's in this area. Maybe maybe they're they're they're, for, they're, they're preventing them from opening up. <laughs> Could be. Is you know, they fight with Walmarts and other companies from coming into certain areas because yeah. literally uh, other stores that are already established, the mom yeah. and pops and what have you. Well, uh, Denny's, Denny's is a 24-hour is a 24-hour establishment that serves uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I guess the diners won't like that. But it's true, you know, by by keeping it a cash business. The diners don't like that, as you said, Jimmy. Don't we live in, in an economy, a country where we allow free enterprise, spirit of competition, as they say? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, come on now. No, they want a monopoly. Diner. If I open a diner a mile up the highway, and Denny's comes in, isn't that free enterprise?
price? Why yes. shouldn't that be allowed? Exactly. Well, I don't know why they're allowed to not pay minimum wage to waiters and waitresses. No, they, they I, it's I, despicable. I this two dollar plus concept. Yeah. You know, oh well they make great money on tips. Well no, they really some we guess some do. But a lot don't. Well guess, guess who established guess who established that law? Uh, Herman Hurricane Kane, the Republican that ran for, for, for president in the last election, he, being that he was involved with uh, pizza. a pizza chain, what was it? You remember what it was? I don't remember. Yeah, remember. a famous pizza chain. Well, well, that's fine, what you're saying, too, but the bottom line, too, is it comes back to one. It's a Republican, it did it. Why don't you care about your people? They do, the corporation. Why don't you care about your people? They do care about people, the corp just the, the rich and the corporations. <laughs> well, there are good corporations and bad ones too. Uh, I, I, I haven't, today, I haven't seen any good ones. One of the world's <laughs> biggest corporations never had a union because their people are well taken care of. Why can't others what follow the same? Is Costco. See? Uh, Costco, yeah. I'm all, I am all for this fast food walk I, Yeah. I believe the people deserve more. They have a right to some semblance of a life. Come on, okay? Seven twenty-five an hour. Okay, don't give me the argument that different states are nine dollars an hour. Okay, yeah, we know that. Still not enough. But, you know, really. Let's let's be fair to these people. They have a right to a, a I, life. To go further, and the more money you have, hopefully, the more they will spend, which will put more money back into the economy overall. Yes. Hopefully. So it gives them more disposable income, or a little more disposable. I, I think the company you were referring to, uh, Billy, is uh, a Costco. Uh, Co Costco treats their employees uh, rather well compared to other corporations. Compared to other, uh, what do you call them, uh, old buying type stores, yes. Yeah, yeah, what I doubt. I think benefits too. Yeah. I believe, I'm not sure, or some, some type or fairly good benefits too. Well, I mean, look at it. Some, a friend of mine is working at somewhere, and I cannot the life of me remember where it is. It's small, like a fast food company. They get benefits. You have a huge thing like a McDonald's burger meal or whatever, and you don't get benefits. You don't get, no. So I don't understand that. that well, the problem seems to be in retail, in, uh, in the food industry, food service industry. Um, it's great. Yeah, it's greed. It's basically it's greed. Remember what I said, okay, you're making ten billion, so you make nine billion next year year because you're paying more salaries. You're not in the you hit you're the you're not in trouble of, of going out of business, okay? Right. Lower your profit margin. Remember what we said about your stockholders. They don't like it, then get rid of the stock. We've got to take care of our people. Our people come first. Yeah. I'm true. Sure the CEO true. would do that, but and don't they don't they also realize uh, on a long term way of thinking that if the employees are making adequate an adequate salary, they will spend money on their company's products. Well, hopefully their company's product, but it doesn't matter. It just goes into the economy. Right. They'll spend more disposably on other people's products, which helps to simulate the economy too. Either way. Yeah. Uh, there are answers, but nobody's really. Sounds like Republicans. You know, there are answers, but they don't have any. We'll figure something out somehow. Yeah. Week, well, uh, we we know the answer, and it's called deregulation. That was started by I think Ronald Reagan, and then made worse by G. W. Bush. Yeah, maybe we need more regulation where the government steps in and says, "We know your tricks. You can hire part time yeah. or not. You're paying benefits to them." Blah blah blah. It's like it, you need government intervention. Sometimes you don't. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll it's like, further next week, I'm sure. Yes, it's like it's like a parents and a child. If you don't lay down the law and have rules for children, yeah, yeah. they'll run amok. That's right, Billy. You it, need, you it, need some, without order, without laws, you have chaos. Correct. You need some structure. You need some structure, some order. That's, that's, that's my final statement, gentlemen. Yes. It's like it, have a good time with the rest of your show. Thank uh, you, and, and it's great having you as always. Thanks.
William I, H. Moore the third. Hasta la vista. Thanks, fellas, and I will talk to you later on. Okay? Yes. Yes. Bye bye. All right, everybody. Take care now. Bye. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, there is an answer, and it's called deregulation. And, uh, you know, I just thought I'd answer him to tell him that, you know, there there are answers. It's just that conservatives are not interested in seeking the well, solution. Barbara Ehrenreich had a book out some years ago called Nickel and Dime. Oh, sounds And she went undercover uh -huh. at many of these types of uh, businesses that you are talking about. Right. Uh, the food industry, the hotels made, stuff like this, who are underpaid, of course. Right. And etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, I mean, it's just that there's nothing, there's nothing they will do. They just will hog the profits unless they is some kind of law against it. Like there was after World War II. They do what they do. They get away with what they get away with. Simply because they can. Because they grease the right palms. Yeah. You know? They grease the right palms is right in yeah. Washington. That's why the important thing is to get the money out of politics. And to get the parties out of politics. Good luck with that. Abolish them all. Why? That's the law. You can make a law for anything. The Republicans do it all the time. In other words, they make laws against abortion, which is a right. constitutional uh, right for in women. No, in other words, if if a candidate can get on the ballot as an independent representing his or her uh, take on things policies policies as an individual. You, you know, let them call themselves whatever they want. If they want to call themselves a moderate, a conservative, a liberal, an ultra-liberal, ultra whatever. But let them run on their own merits, independent of a party. Because once you're part of a party, you have to answer to too many people. Yeah, it becomes party over the country. Uh, yeah, partisan politics, a party over country over the good, what's good for the country. Correct. Okay, uh, all right, let us um, sink our teeth back into these readings. All righty. Florida NASA is headed back to the moon. Really? You mean like as in uh, Cape Canaveral? Well, I don't mean pow, zoom, Alice, to the moon. To the moon. This time to explore its thin atmosphere and rough dust. I didn't even know it had an atmosphere. Neither did I. Very thin, though. The robotic spacecraft LADE, L-A-D-E-E, -E, will fly to the moon by way of Virginia's eastern shore. Liftoff is set for 11.27 tonight. Wait a minute. Virginia has a Na that NASA... That was yesterday. Virginia has a NASA <laughs> launch pad? Virginia? I don't know. I, it seems to me that it's going to fly uh, like along the shore. So it's going, it's to going up, of course. But so it's going to take off at Cape Canaveral, and it's going north along the coast, and then to the moon, Alice, to the moon. Yes. Okay. Weather permitting, the soaring Minotaur rocket should be visible along much of the east coast, oh. as far south as South Carolina. So forget about us seeing it in the sky. Because it's over. It's, it happened yesterday. It's on its way to the moon. As far south as Carolina and as far north as Maine. I would have named it Alice since it was going to the moon. And as far west as Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Alice. Named after the honeymooners. And have a picture of uh, Ralph Cramden's face on, on the side. 
Anyway. Laddie is short for Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer. Yeah, I kind of figured it was an abbreviation for something. We'll be the first spacecraft to be launched into outer space from Wallops. Wallops? All but one of NASA's approximately 40 moon missions. Most memorably, the man 40 times they were to the moon? Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You mean they've been sending probes this whole probes time? Probes and stuff to the moon, yeah. And well, of it's a, Apollo. It's a short trip. I mean, compared to the to the to the Mars probe, it's, it's pretty short. So I, you know, why be redundant and bore people with, you know? Most notably, the manned Apollo flights of the late '60s and early '70s originated from Cape Canaveral. The lone exception. Clementine, a military NASA venture, rocketed away from Southern California in 1994. Clementine, named after the, the, the tasty Clementine tangerines. You ever have one of those? I believe I have had a Clementine. Tan tangerine? Yeah, they're small. Yeah. yeah. The unmanned Minotaur rocket consists of converted intercontinental ballistic missile motors. Scientists involved in the $280 million moon orbiting mission want to examine the lunar atmosphere. Sometimes people are a little taken aback when we start talking about the lunar atmosphere because right, we were told in school, that the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. That's what I thought. It does. There's no atmosphere and there's no cheese on the moon. For you idiots, they used to tell oh, children. Wait a second. For you idiots, they used to tell children that. Just a second now. What about that commercial? They, it's stupid. I love when cheese. The guy but it's not on the moon. Chomps on the cheese, whatever, and the moon blows up and cheese falls in his hand. I rest my case. It does have an atmosphere. It's really, really thin. Wow. It will take Laddie, the size of a small car, coming in under 1,000 pounds, one month, to get close enough to the moon to go into lunar orbit. Takes that long? It shouldn't. Now, obviously, they slowed it down for some reason. It's only 240,000 miles or something, right? To the moon. Well, since since something we like can that. see, can't be that long of a trip. Yeah. <sighs> Followed by another month to check its three scientific instruments. Then the spacecraft will be maneuvered from 30 miles to 90 miles above the mm. lunar surface. Okay. Where it will collect data for just over three months. The mission will take six months and end with a plunge into the moon. A plunge? You mean it's gonna like sacrifice itself? Commit so commit Harry Carey on commit the moon? Missile size. Really? Missile side. Hey, I just thought of something. Why haven't they decided, why, how come nobody ever um, thought of putting a space station on the moon? They did. What was it called? Nin it too, uh, it uh, 1999? The too dangerous? Was it a meteor, meteor showers? In fact, I saw, I saw also that they're, they, they do have plans. They do have, um, what would you call them? New Gingrich plan. On, on putting a colony on the moon, yeah. remember that? Yeah. Uh, Maybe they, that's where he wants to ship the poor. To. They do have like um, structures uh -huh. that would house the people, you know, which would be have their own atmosphere. Bah, 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 oh, like a bi bi biosphere. Like a biosphere. Yeah. I think it's I think it's more fascinating and more of a challenge 
to have the space station on the moon than it is to just revolve around Earth. Earth. You know, a multi-national space station on the moon, a lunar space station. You know, where they could grow, they could grow. Well, you'd have to grow your own vegetables. Food. Because hydrogen. once you go there, you ain't coming back. <laughs> Well, then again, how would they get the water? I was going to say hydroponically, but... No, they can make water. They're going to make water. Okay, so you have a, a artificial atmosphere in a dome. <laughs> Excuse me. And you hydroponically grow yeah. produce, which can be done. And maybe even aqua well, aquaculture know. tilapia maybe. as a source of protein. That maybe could be done, you know. you can grow grapes in the... Lunar, the lunar soil, because grapes require a bad soil. Soil. Yeah, grapes. Grapes. Grow. Grapes like, grapes like shitty. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs> hey. Grapes like a, a, a crappy soil, poor environment. Yeah, I think grapes are the only, one of the few plants that can thrive in a, in a poor soil. And, and, and if you put a dome over the moon and, um, and fill it with oxygen, you will have a greenhouse, a lunar greenhouse. Well, the structures I saw were individual structures hooked together, you know, that you can go in and out, you know, not one domed place. No, no, no. They, they will be, uh, they will be uh, interlocking. Yeah. You know, you might have a dome with a, a, a tunnel, a tube pathway to another dome, mm -hmm. uh, and a tube pathway to another dome. Yeah. One dome could have herbs, one dome could have peppers and right. tomatoes, whatever, whatever what you want to do. Whatever. It's, it's doable. Let's yeah. put it like that. Aquaculture. Very doable, like tilapia, fresh water. You know, you, you got to keep the water warm. You can raise tilapia. Um, I don't know about prawns. Maybe freshwater prawns. Yeah. They get large, you know. Oh, uh, are you done with that reading? I'm done with that reading. Uh, I lost, back home, I lost all electricity in the whole house this morning. Did you? No. So maybe it was that section of town. I don't want. I, well, I, is it back on? Yeah, no, it came back on uh, uh, a long time ago, but it was out, the electricity was out for a while hmm. in the whole house. So you know, I don't know what was going on. The first thing that came to my mind is the big grid went out. The solar flare knocked the grid out. You know how my mind works. You know. <laughs> well, it's usually a. Um, it's usually here in Lodi. It's usually a changeover thing. <laughs> Something goes wrong in the changeover. Yeah, because yeah. no wonders. Quite often the clocks are blinking back at home. Back well, that could be a surge or, you know, momentary loss of power or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, we, uh, I don't live far from the Newsletter Sensor Research Center. Uh, I mean, just like... We experience nothing. Hop, skip, and a jump, you know, uh, maybe five-minute drive, luckily. You know, yeah, no, you, you were fine. Yep. Um, Okay, what do you got next? Let's a Pennsylvania see. congressman caught a cutting edge ride to the airport on Wednesday. Yeah, what happened? Representative Bill Schuster, a Republican from Altoona, Pennsylvania. And it's not on the coast, and there's no tuna boats coming in. Made a 33 mile trip from Cranberry Township to Pittsburgh. International Airport in a computer operated car. You mean he didn't have to drive it? Correct. He put it on automatic pilot and uh, he trusted that this computer operated car using some kind of sonar perhaps? The so called driverless Cadillac. Ra radar, radar, I'm sorry. Radar. Cadillac SRX was designed by Carnegie Mellon University researchers wow. who have been working on the project since 2008. 
the car uses inputs from radars, laser rangefinder. Uh, Loran, I mean, um, um, satellite. And infrared cameras to maneuver in traffic. At night. Anytime. So it, it maintains safe distance. It's programmed to maintain safe distance from other drivers, other cars. Schuster is the chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Infrastructure Committee, and he was accompanied by Barry Scotch, Secretary look, 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 look. of the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Okay. And, and I assume this vehicle maintains the proper speed limits too. Schuster saw a Carnegie Mellon test vehicle about five years ago. And he said it was crammed so full of equipment that there wasn't even room for a person inside. So this is an experimental vehicle. Yeah, that, now, that doesn't work if you can't get people in it. <laughs> the 2011 Cadillac is basically a standard model with all the sensors and electronics hidden. Oh, they took the, the bugs of uh, space? Uh, oh, really? So the vehicle exists? It didn't look out of place on the drive to the airport, which began in a suburban area with stop-and-go traffic, uh, then reached speeds of about 65 miles an hour on major highway. Um, is it, is it a hybrid? A Carnegie Mellon engineer was in the driver's seat as a safety precaution. It should be a hybrid or electric, yeah. Schuster said he can now imagine a future where such vehicles enter the mainstream, potentially reducing accidents, fatalities, and congestion on the road. I'm sure auto insurance companies would just love the, this vehicle. Right? To reduce claims. Maybe they would do away with the insurance companies in the first place. If, this if the car was so safe. If this vehicle statistically would, would work without many uh, complaints or no complaints, you're right. You're right. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Insurance companies would have no reason to char charge high premiums knowing that this car is being purchased often. But there's also a military angle. Of course. It's going to be great for our military to be able to send vehicles into combat without people in them. Uh, what about a uh, un unmanned vehicle to go out and detect mines, landmines? And IEDs. And IEDs, the bombs, yeah, yeah. The United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency began holding competitions for driverless vehicles in 2004. And the Carnegie Mellon team won the 2007 race along with the two million dollar prize. Raj, Raj Kumar. Hey, I play chess with a guy with almost that name. Really? From India. Oh. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bill is a, a chess enthusiast. Avid? An avid chess enthusiast. Ah. And, and a, 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 what would you say, a moderate level? Uh, uh, intermediate, it intermediate level play, uh, competitive player? It depends. Sometimes you are above intermediate. That's correct. I have gone, I have beaten computers at levels of over 2,000. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Did they send you a certificate? No, no, there no certificate. How brilliant you are, so you can. You can I don't need no so I can, certificates. So I can put it on the newsletter censored Facebook page to show people how brilliant you are? I am a humble servant. Ah, uh, humble my ass. A humble messenger. Yeah, but it's good for your credentials. 
No credentials. God is not a respecter of persons. I've told you how many times. Unfortunately, people are. Well, then they should change, shouldn't they? Nobody's changing out there. Thank you. Nobody's changing. Anyway, Raj Raj Kumar is the leader of the Carnegie Mellon project. And he said, biggest design challenge for driverless vehicles is managing unpredictable events. It takes a long time to be taught all the things we know about driving. You can build a system that works correctly today. How do you know it's going to work well tomorrow? Because it's a new set of conditions. And you are unable to test all possible conditions. It's an infinite number. Raj Kumar thinks some driverless cars may hit the marketplace by 2020. It has to take that long. I think, unless they, something is oh, suppressing it. A lot of kinks to iron out, he just said. Okay. Though some experts say it will take longer. GM, Nissan, and Google are all working on projects, as are other universities. Yeah, right, which, which is good for science when you have competition engineers from different companies working on it for now engineers are still gathering data and running tests a camera on the car recorded Schuster's trip and streaming video is available online really well so you might want to look that up there's no better way to test it than with the military because, you know, it definitely, it's very important to have unmanned vehicles, like the drone, the drone planes, you know, un, un, unmanned, to save lives. Uh, and, and, save and with, and with the bombs, it's extremely important to have a ve unmanned vehicle to go out and find all these bombs and mines. I mean, so these poor, poor souls don't come back home with missing legs or, or, or dead. And then their claims they get placed in boxes, in storerooms, at the Veterans Association. And they can't be found when they're looked for. Oh, really? Oh, really. Carnegie Mellon also let local law enforcement know about the road tests. And one officer imagined a possible future where drunken driving no longer exists. Well, um, would it kick in as soon as you uh, put the car in drive? Or no, no, I'm sorry, as soon as you start the You would the be drunk and it would drive you home! In other words, if you start the car, in other, in other words, you do not have to pre-program it when you want to go somewhere. So an intoxicated Maybe. individual will simply get in, turn the key, and it will have your address, your home address logged in already. Does it park? Everything. It does everything. I hope it has sense enough to find out if you're, you know, to find your driveway at home. GPS, man. GPS. Driveway. Well, you can give it a command. You can park on street, park in driveway. Park in, the drunk person will go, uh, park in driveway. And it'll pull right in. It's very intriguing. Lieutenant Kevin Meyer. That's me intrigued. Of the Cranberry Township Police Department as he waited for Schuster to depart. But Mayer added that law enforcement would have to adapt to such vehicles. Oh, they won't be able to write as many tickets. We have to wait for the Pennsylvania laws to catch up with the technology that's involved in this vehicle. All American laws I have not been able to catch up to technology. All American laws uh, uh, don't know how to catch up with uh, human nature either. Look at look at the state and federal government, all the paperwork they're still using, for God's sakes, compared to the private sector. I got news for you, pal. Russia 
has gone back to the typewriter. Are they out of their minds? To avoid hacking are and etc. Are they out of their minds? No. It is what I say all the time. Oh, there is no substitute for black and white. I don't like this idea. They're going back to the filing cabinet with 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 uh, and the Oscar Madison uh, uh, typewriter. And when the terrorists communicate, hand them a note instead of using a cell phone. Oh, uh, you The cell phone, which is uh, uh, monitored by the United States government. Why don't you do, why don't you go back, do away with pens and go back to the quill that you, they, they used to dip in the ink well. I got news for you, Come pal. on. Quill this writing is all ridiculous. Is ah, come on. Too, too, it's too old-fashioned. I, I just told you no, that no, new no. technology is subject to too much interference and hacking and etc. Whereas the typewriter and the black and white piece of paper is not. You take the bugs out of the problem. You, you, you can't. For every bug they fix. Microsoft has been doing it since when? Well, that time we had a blackout and I was in Whole Foods with, with William H. Morrow <gasps> and, and, and the electricity and there was a big blackout and nobody could make um, cell phone calls and guess what? Uh, customers in the market had to leave their uh, grocery baskets that were loaded with mounds of groceries. They had to leave. They couldn't. They couldn't pay for it. They couldn't. Uh, uh, the cashiers couldn't do anything. My point exactly. Because they couldn't scan anything. But there My was. My point exactly. There was no. They had no backup generator for the front end for the registers, and there was no ability to manually ring up the food, the products. Did you ever see that movie, what the hell was the name of it? Uh, War Games? I think it was War Games, where the teenage boy and the girl or something, they hacked into the uh, Pentagon's computers and etc. and they played War Games. And they moved everything around, ba 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 ba. Yeah. You know, really uh, started problems. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, this is what the computer generation has left us with. China hacks into our military uh, computers, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yeah, and 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 yeah, and no substitute for good old black and white. And younger generation uh, people, uh, young people, uh, have they ha they've lost contact with the real world and dealing with people face to face. They cannot deal with uh, outside of their what they know today, the technology. No, their 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 face is in is in their tablets and smartphones. <laughs> They're texting, constantly texting and they and they just are unaware of the environment around them. You know, and, and they just don't know how to deal with a human being face to face, looking at some looking somebody in the eye. You know, it's like everybody's in, in their own world their virtual world of texting, you know. Anyway, this uh, lieutenant says, uh, what happens in the uh, case of uh, a scenario in which a driverless car is in an accident with one driven by a person? Mm -hmm. Who do we write up if there's a violation? <laughs> Can't give a ticket to the computer. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, who do we write up if there is a violation? Who do we write we up? We have to rethink a lot of crap, okay? Well, pros and cons. I would say if the bugs are taken out of it and they're and they're good to good to go, and and to mass produce this, I would say there's a lot more pro. Shut up! I would say there's a lot more pros than cons. This is one of the drawbacks of going au naturel. You have to hear assholes dribbling their basketball, dogs barking. Ah, oh, what are we what are we doing on time here? Let me see. Four. What do we got? Oh, uh, what do you got? You want? You got? Did you find any uh, juicy political uh, reading? Or, or another light subject. 
Right, but important. Oh, good. All things are important. You must put them in the proper context. Uh, all right, go ahead. It turns out that Uranus. <laughs> go ahead. My as anus? a cosmic companion, as it circles the sun from oh. nearly 1.8 billion miles away. A cosmic companion in my anus. That's not good. I better increase my fiber so I can get rid of it. Scientists! Science! Have detected a Trojan! Yes, we're talking about the, the computer virus related Trojan. Not the condom. An asteroid. Hemorrhoid? Like object that shares a planet. An asteroid, hemorrhoid, get it? Orbit. Orbit. Moving ahead of the ice giant. Ugh. An asteroid. Is it in it is it is has been in orbit around the planet Uranus? The discovery of twenty eleven QF nine nine not nine 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 but nine nine two nines. Two nines was reported last week in the journal Science, and it was found almost by accident. Mike Alexanderson, a doctoral student in astronomy at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, wasn't looking for a Trojan nor was he studying Uranus. <laughs> yeah, he's not my proctologist. It wasn't Agent 99, Barbara Feldon in the Get Smart series. Wasn't she Agent 99? Yes, she was. And I think Maxwell Smart was 86. Agent 86. I don't know if he had a number. Yeah, the chief used to call him sometimes 86. I, I, but I know she was 99. He and his colleagues were surveying the trans-Neptunian region. The Neptunian region. Of the so outer solar system, hoping to see what kinds of orbits the objects there follow. The trans-Neptunian region is more or less the same thing as the Kuiper belt. That I've heard of. Studying the patterns of objects' orbits in the region helps scientists understand how the solar system formed some 4.5 billion years ago. Oh, now it's down to 4.5 billion? What happened to 13 billion? Were they trying to make the, uh, the religious nuts happier? Happy? Compromising with them? Well, they're still far away from 6,000 years, believe me. But, uh, hey, who knows? As Alexanderson and the team examined images snapped using the Canada, France, Hawaii telescope during 2011 and 2012, they noticed one object that was a moving, moving across the field of vision more quickly than the others. It was an indication that the object was closer to the Earth than the rest. That part wasn't a surprise. But seeing something that moved the way 2011's QF99 did was a shocker. The scientists had expected to see objects known as centaurs, which often move toward the center of the solar system along quirky paths. But over the course of a year of observations, they realized that this particular space rock was traveling in an orbit very much like that of Uranus. He loves it every time he's seen it. That made it seem more like a Trojan. Trojan man! Yeah, Trojan and Uranus. <laughs> you know, the Trojans... The Trojans have a one that um, maybe it's got jalapeno in it or something, but it's a little a little heat there. 
jalapeno for a heat uh, sensation oh my god well heat can be added very easily and cheaply in many ways depending on the uh, the severity of what the recipient would like <coughs> the s and m severity that made it seem more like a trojan gravitationally bound to its planet the mysterious object also oscillated the same way a Trojan would. It was, in fact, a Trojan. The team members were certainly not anticipating finding something as cool as this. University of California, Los Angeles. Planetary scientist David Jewett who is credited with detecting the first Kyber Belt object in 1992, said that the trans-Newtonian Neptunian region is the source of all sorts of objects hurtling about the solar system, providing an armada-like rain of stuff, cascading inward toward the sun. As they move about, they get caught up in planet's gravity, either getting hurled away or thrown further inward. Chunks that float around in the zone of the giant planets are called centaurs. Those that make it into the inner solar system, heating and vaporizing in the sun's heat, are known as comets. Trojans are the bits that get <coughs> captured, excuse me, in particular locations in a planet's orbit where gravity from the sun and gravity from the planet interact to lock them in place. Okay. Some Trojans around Mars, Neptune, and Jupiter are permanently bound into their to their planets and have been for billions of years. Others, like 2011 QF99 and the Earth's Trojan 2010 2K7, are only tempor temporarily trapped in their orbits. The planets are playing ball with this thing. Eventually, they'll lose control of it. Alexanderson and his colleagues conducted a computer simulation that showed that the Trojan, which is about 37 miles wide, was that bigger than the asteroid in Arm Armageddon with Bruce Willis? I, I remember the movie, but I do not remember the size of it. I think it was smaller. It's only temporarily bound to Uranus. Sometime within the next million years, it's likely to drop out of its orbit and become a centaur. The simulation also revealed that around 3% of the minor objects in the giant planet region were likely to go to be co-orbiting with Uranus or Neptune at any given time. The International Astronomical Union, which is in charge of naming such bodies, in the solar system, may decide to give 2011 QF99 a different name. We may get to send them a suggestion, Alexanderson said. For now, he said he will use the remaining few days of scheduled telescope time to continue tracking the Trojan this fall but probably won't study this a lot more. Shifting gears to work on the planned part of his thesis. Now, do you have anything on our beloved Republican Conservative Congress? Okay, that, that, that's it. We'll wrap it up. Thank you for joining us.
for this I week. wanted to say a word, please. Oh, no, I had, I had to do a little promo, but you say your word. Say your word. Uh, in line with this one we just read. Yes. You know, the Hubble telescope has been the greatest experiment of this or any other century. Yeah. It gives us so much to look back on in space. Because, it's because there is no atmospheric interference, interference with, the, with the humble Hubble. Correct. There is no cloudy days in space. It's, you know, and also lasers work much better in a vacuum of space too. But the Hubble is one of the most positive, greatest scientific projects in my opinion. Of all time. Of all time. Yes. Because, um, and of course, the, the unmanned probes are, yes, are, the Hubble. are fantastic. Huh? The Hubble gives us pictures of space that the human mind yeah. can never conceive yeah. Deep space. of the vastness of yeah, space. Deep space, like black holes and, and supernova stars and... Uh, and space. And quasars and pulsars and all that stuff. And space <laughs> is expanding. Yes. Not just, you know, things moving away or... <laughs> it, the whole of space is expanding. I heard the within, end. And it's, space is within some sort of container. Well, you know, the... Uh, it's not just total vastness, you know? I hear that the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy is moving slowly closer together. Well, we are in the Milky Way. And we are in <coughs> the area of the Milky Way where I... Oh, if the words escape me, but it is the luckiest portion of the Milky Way. If we were somewhere this place or that place, we would not exist. Isn't the it, Earth would not isn't exist. Isn't it amazing how Earth is is at the perfect distance from the Sun, yeah. and with the right at the right correct angle angle of axis for right. having the ideal climate to support life, despite the winter. I know the seasons have their purpose too, but just the perfect distance from the sun to support life and, and allow water to accumulate and, and all this. It's just amazing. It, it can't be just coincidental. And, and, and what, what is happening? The, the, the greed and evil of you, the human race is destroying this precious planet and its environment and the life on it. Destroying it because of greed, because yeah. of profit before people in the planet. And, Matthew 24. Uh, and we only have uh, there. We only have a planet A. There is no planet B. Plan A or Plan B. No, there, there no is no plan, plan B, B with the, with Earth. So you know, I'm glad you brought that up because this is all very applicable to today as commentary on that last reading. Now I just want to say really quick. Show the product that we have been selling from the Mega Life 21 progressive hard hitting internet talk radio station. It is imported from mainland China. It is red Panax ginseng extract liquid form with royal jelly fed only to queen bees, liquid form mega dose red Panax ginseng and royal jelly, two of the most effective, most powerful, time-proven tonics, tonics for the human body. Just, uh, if you if you want to know what they do, just Google them, Royal Jelly and uh, Red Panax Ginseng, and you get a 30-day supply. There are 30 liquid vials in this beautiful red and gold box. Okay, so go to NewsletterCensored.com and at the top of the page there is a link to our radio station and then you can order yours right now. Okay? Now thank you for joining us.
people for progressive discussions. Okay, autumn is coming close, and that's when I will do that little limerick. You know, when the frost is hot, when the weather is hot and sticky, that's no time for Duncan Dickey. Hell no. But when the frost is on the pumpkin, that's the time for. Damn. Dickie Duncan. Dickie Duncan. Say so long to these people. So long, people.